yeah, Caveman is a movie from 1981, starring Ringo Starr. Also stars Shelley Long and Dennis Quaid. Uh, also has Barbara Bach in there, who, after this movie, went on to become um, Ringo Starr's longtime spouse. In the whole movie, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's Caveman. It's a prehistoric man who, of course, uh, coexists with dinosaurs because we want to have some dinosaur gags in there. We want to have, um, you know, maybe a little bit of special effects. It's a comedy. Actually, a few really funny moments in this, but on the whole, hmm, this movie just really didn't work for me overall. So let's get into it. Uh, first of all, the acting, uh, I guess, is fine. I mean, it's mostly physical acting, um, physical comedy, because, of course, cavemen don't really have a language. Uh, they have, uh, they all have names, and there's a few key words, like maybe about four, five, six words or something, that they repeat, like uh, the word for uh, sex, uh, the word for love, the word for uh, dinosaur. Uh, you know, they repeat those over and over, and so you, I guess you get to know a little bit of the caveman language. But uh, for the most part, the dialogue is, uh, it's not really there. It's, it's meant to be a comedy, it's meant to be stupid, uh, a bunch of people falling over, getting hit in the head with rocks and stuff like that. The cavemen all get chased up a tree by a dinosaur. Uh, there's a really unfunny, kind of like, roofy kind of scene um, that goes wrong, and this is perpetrated by Atuk, who is uh, played by Ringo Starr, our main character. Um, it's kind of uncomfortable, and uh, kind of really ruined the movie. Uh, I guess, you know, the point of it is, like, this is primal men. This is, like, so-and-so wants to get with this female, and this has to fight the alpha male for her, or whatever. Like, it's done for comedy in a situation that's, like, it's not really all that cool. I don't know, I'll give it a pass. It was 1981. It was a, This is a really sexist, really, like, kind of gropey rapey kind of caveman movie I guess you could say it's not that bad maybe I'm reading too much into it I mean it is just cavemen but uh, to pull off a lot of these jokes uh, their execution is really dumb and whatever Ringo Starr though I mean like I said he plays Atuk the uh, the lead protagonist in this uh, he's kind of like a loser in his tribe he, he gets pushed around by the like chief and stuff and he's uh, the smallest and the weakest of the tribe you know after trying to um, get with the chief's woman uh, he gets kicked out of the tribe and then he has to go and eventually he forms his own tribe like I kind of get the whole theme of the movie like okay it's supposed to be uh, Ringo Starr he proves that he's uh, you know, a good leader, and he's uh, smart and capable, and being using his intelligence rather than his physical strength and intimidation, uh, he's uh, able to motivate people and to make discoveries and things like that. And his new tribe uh, incorporates a whole diverse cast of characters, which I think is kind of cool. But there's, uh, you know, some stereotypes going on in there. Like, for instance, there's an African caveman in there. Uh, there's an Asian caveman who, for whatever reason, actually speaks his lines in English a couple times, or he says some, like, English words. He's the only one that does. Uh, and that's weird. I don't really get it. Then there's, like, a couple of gay cavemen, or, you know, a couple of male homosexual cavemen, and they're there just, you know, kind of for laughs or whatever. You know, like, there's the old blind caveman. Ooh, that guy, played by Jack Guilford. Have I got that name right? Anyway, that's the guy that I complained about when I did a review of uh, Cocoon the Return. The guy that played Bernie in Cocoon the Return, he's in this, and he plays like this uh, blind, old, just ridiculous, I don't know if he's, is he supposed to be blind, I can't tell, but he's just dumb and he's out of it all the time, and uh, he's always getting hurt and like getting into trouble and stuff like that, and he's not funny. Uh, and he is also the, I'm guessing, the father of uh, Shelley Long's character. Uh, I don't remember any of the characters' names. They're like, they're all like Took, Ak, Grog, Goo, Lar. You, oh, Lar. Lar is played by uh, 
Dennis Quaid. I remember one. Yeah, Shelley Long. I mean, Shelley Long's pretty good in this, I guess. Uh, you know, she's likable and she's uh, uh, she's pursuing Atuk, although Atuk is still in love with the chief's wife or whatever. Uh, in the end, okay, uh, she gets with Atuk, so it's Shelley Long and Ringo Starr get together, and because it's meant to be and it's the love story and blah blah blah. Anyway, okay, yeah, so there's a bunch of physical comedy, a bunch of cavemen falling down and falling off cliffs and hitting, getting hit in the head with rocks and stuff and logs and whatever. Um, but there's also those dinosaurs in there. This is the one really bright spot of this movie. Not that the special effects are great, but they're there. It's stop motion dinosaurs, but for whatever reason, they've got like googly eyes and uh, they look really goofy. And I think that's the one thing that really made me laugh in this movie is how stupid the dinosaurs look. Uh, there's a running joke about, um, you know, they show the moon rise or whatever, and where normally there would be like a wolf, there's like a dinosaur up on a ledge and he's like howling at the moon. And then in the morning, the sun rises, and that same dinosaur is there, and he's, like, crowing like a rooster, and I thought that was a funny running gag. One. One funny gag. Uh, okay, actually, one other funny gag in there is uh, the uh, cavemen, Dennis Quaid and uh, Ringo Starr, they're, they're, like, laying down, having a nap. A big, like, giant mosquito, like, lands, like, giant, like, bigger than his face. Uh, mosquito lands on Dennis Quaid's face. Ringo Starr's trying to like shoosh it off, but he's being all gentle about it like it's a normal bug. But he can't get it to get off of his face, so eventually he just like squishes it, and then there's like all this gross yellowy green goop all over Dennis Quaid's face after he kills this bug. That made me laugh. That and the googly eyed dinosaurs, that's pretty much it. That's the entertainment value of this. Uh, I mean, I guess, I don't know. I like seeing Shelley Long, I've had a crush on her since Cheers. Uh, but other than that, I mean, yeah, Ringo Starr's pretty dumb in this, uh, yeah, but overall, I mean, if it weren't for those dinosaurs, I would not have kept watching this, uh, because the dinosaurs were the only cool thing in there. So I'm gonna have to give Caveman a D plus. D plus because it had a few, like, interesting moments, and, uh, it's like a little snapshot of Ringo Starr's career. Also, uh, Dennis Quaid, uh, Shelley Long. This is the kind of thing that those particular celebrities were working on in 1980-81. I guess, so that's a positive. Uh, and the dinosaurs. Googly-eyed dinosaurs. Hey, you can't go wrong with that, man. It's pretty boring. Really lowbrow humor in there. Um, only a couple of fart jokes, though. The storyline is super predictable, and... Uh, this isn't worth your time. Yeah, deep plus. So until next time, have a good one, everybody.